welcome to netbook study and this is the daily current affairs analysis of 9th august 2024 in this video as usual we are going to discuss the important news articles from hindu as well as indian express along with that previous years questions are also going to be discussed let's get into the discussion of this the first article is regarding bangladesh and let's see what exactly this news article is talking let's see the headline change in bangladesh and challenges for india so let's see the content of this news article See here in this article it has been mentioned that 2024 it is a game changer for Bangladesh. There are two aspects you need to focus here. One is political aspect, another one is economic aspect of Bangladesh. Political aspects it's been 15 years. Uh, Sheikh Hasina she was ruling the Bangladesh and they, there was a kind of anti incumbency and they even if you look at the recent elections, no opposition party they took part in the election and most of the opposition leaders they were put behind the bars by Sheikh Hasina and there were some serious restrictions for also uh, for the democratic process in the country so there was kind of insensitivity, insensitivity shown by Sheikh Hasina so uh, at the social level there was insecurity at the social level there was aggression towards the administration so this is the this is the political scenario and let's see the economic scenario recently the if you look at the uh, economic data of bangladesh there was a negative uh, indicators were there with respect to uh, various economic uh, aspects of bangladesh along with that unemployment was very big issue so at the social level there were kind of insecurity there were dissatisfaction regarding administration it was all already there so very recently what happened the 30 percent reservation aspects where 30 percent of the government post will be reserved for the families of war veterans and the people were not happy with that especially students they were not at all happy with that and the initially it was the agitation started against this particular reservation but all of the sudden this agitation it grown very big and opposition parties also supported to it and all of the sudden it has evolved into a an aggressive movement to uh, overthrow the present government and this anti-discrimination student movement even initially government also ignored but later on when it was taking some kind of violent turn government tried to control it with a very hard position but it not, could not able to and the entire support to this particular agitation from the ground level at the social level see already there was kind of aggression towards uh, government there was kind of dissatisfaction towards administration and this agitation it gave that channelizing force for the people for the local people to uh, channelize their aggression towards the administration so there was an outward so this is the this anti-discrimination student movement this is the triggering fact this is the immediate effect for the entire whatever things we are we are seeing at the bangladesh at this point of time and another noticeable aspect is that armed forces armed forces of bangladesh see when the this ag agitation was going on Armed forces of Bangladesh, they did not take very hard stand initially against uh, these protesters. But later on, if you look at the second part of the agitation, they started supporting the, the agitator, they started supporting the students in an indirect way. So this was the threatening, this was the changing factor. See, if the armed forces, if the security agencies, if they are not supporting the administration, administration cannot rule. As soon as Sheikh Hasina, she understood that when the army, military, they are supporting students, so that was the triggering point for her to leave the country, fled the country and to seek asylum in another country. Now, see, it's fine. Till now, you understood that there was kind of aggression. Then the army entered and somewhere it facilitated the student. Now, the next part is the Muhammad Yunus he is a Nobel Prize winner. He is going to be the prime minister in the interim government. So this is the decision taken by uh, Bangladesh. And even this decision is also supported by armed forces. And this author is trying to say that see some kind of vulnerability it is visible from the armed forces because if you look at the similar situation happened in other countries also it happened so many times in pakistan it happens in myanmar so even in maldives and sri lanka and all these situation army always used to have a very strong hold but here if you look at the bangladesh situation armed forces it told that we are going to conduct our democratic elections and we are going to follow this usually it clearly shows that there is some kind of vulnerability there even with respect to armed forces also usually whenever these kind of a coup if these kind of aggressive uh, agitations happens army always take control of the situation but here 
it is not taking it is keeping or taking its step back from the administration so this is the question mark author is quite surprised to see this particular move one thing it is taking step back and the second thing is it is wholeheartedly supporting the uh, interim government headed by mohammad yunus here so it clearly shows that the social situation at the ground level it's quite difficult to handle so army also understood that if we get into the situation it will be difficult for us also to handle it so they wanted a leader with who is respected by the country who has that knowledge and who has that capability to convince the world leaders also so at the domestic level you need to convince the local people at the international level you have to tell the international bodies like uno or and the big big countries like you uh, Uh, us and european countries that yes i could have i i can easily handle the situation here so that confirmation you need one personality to handle all this so that is the reason even armed forces also supporting interim government headed by mohammad yunus and another aspect with respect to armed forces is one thing is interim government so somehow they got a solution with respect to interim government they got the interim prime minister also but the next aspect is the second important aspect is see this protest that is going on and the protest initially it started as a student protest but it has later it is hijacked by other reasons even there is a religious fundamentalist they entered the, into the uh, picture and then opposition party leader they entered into the picture and everything has taken a different turn and if you look at it as of now uh, the aggression is going on against the sheikh hasina party members and even uh, people who are indirectly supporting sheikh hasina rule awam mili even they also been targeted minorities are targeted the hindus are targeted there and this is quite difficult to handle it entire student agitation it has been hijacked and how do you handle this hijacked situation at this point of time so this is another reason where armed forces are quite skeptical and the third reason is jamaat e islami jamaat e islami it has unleashed the islamic jihadist violence in the year of 2006 and 2007 and it was banned at that point of time since it was creating trouble at the social level so now even this has been given complete power to it and opposition leaders are also supporting these kind of religious fundamentalism all these things they these are going to uh, change the social aspect eventually if proper steps are not taken at this point of time even if you look at the uh, look at the internet uh, videos especially in the twitter and all especially the awami league sympathizers they are beaten up their properties are uh, they are burned and even they are killed and their dead bodies are hanged on the roads so these kind of things this is are going on and now it is turning towards the minority community so it clearly very tough situation to handle all these things and that is the reason armed forces they are taking a step back now the next question is how exactly this is challenge for india see one thing initially started as a reservation from reservation it took a political uh, structure now it has taken a jamaat e islami the religious fundamentalism now it is focused from religious fundamentalism minorities were attacked now the entire issue is going to be turned into a india anti india forces so there is at the social level at the ground level uh, an effort has been put especially there is a role of us and uh, uh, pakistan also to it they are fueling to it and the anti india agenda this is going on and this is going to be extremely difficult for india also how do you handle this kind of thing if the people of a one country they started seeing as enemy country they think that you are responsible for all their miseries then how do you handle this this is very very tricky challenge for india and finally author she has given a solution that see we cannot eat we cannot do anything at this point of time we cannot involve in internal affairs of some other country these kind of things happened in myanmar it happened in sri lanka and even with nepal we don't have a very cordial or good relationship it is tilting towards uh, china then pakistan we have issue and very recently maldives also we have seen india out campaign and afghanistan also the taliban there is some troublesome relationship we have this kind of relationship with all our neighbors so how do you deal with this kind of situation one and only thing is you focus on human rights you focus on developmental projects so you just give these kind of projects the school libraries or hospitals you build these kind of infrastructure in their country don't expect any today or tomorrow people will realize these are the long term projects which are going to give us dividends in a long term people will understand that india is not interfering in the personal affairs of our country 
in turn india is helping us india is giving infrastructure india is giving money india is giving credit so people will realize the positive side of india support here so this is what india should do we should go for a strong development partnership strong developmental project building in the neighboring countries so even with bangladesh also let us have the cordial relationship with our opposition parties also opposition party it is bangladesh nationalist party headed by kalida zia so author is trying to say that you continue that relationship with kalida zia also and also develop these kind of infrastructure projects so eventually people will realize and we are going to have that cordial relationship down the line so this is what this article is talking about and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2018 analyze the internal security threats and trans border crimes against myanmar bangladesh pakistan borders analyze including line of control also discuss the role played by various security forces in this regard let's move to the next news the next news is regarding malayan towns and what exactly this article is talking about why himalayan towns need a different kinds of development and this article is written from the perspective of recent landslide cloud burst and because of that so many people have uh, they have lost the lives also and even you can connect it to the wayanad landslide also you can raise the similar points in your answers also from means perspective this article is important and just understand the points and you can replicate the same points in your examination also initial uh, initial part of the first part of the article it talks about what are the problems in himalayan ecosystem and the second part talks about solution how do you deal with this and what are the solution for these problems so let's get into the discussion and let's see what exactly this article is talking the indian himalayan under the indian himalayan trees it has seven states in our country that include jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh then comes uttarakhand uh, so on the on the whole till the northeast and there are 11 states and it also comprises of two union territories so you can realize that the impact of himalayan range and the ecosystem is seen and if you look at the urban growth in these regions it is 40% and that too in only 10 years from 2011 to 2021 10 years the decadal growth of urban growth rate in that region is 40% see this is beyond the expectation 40% usually 10% 20% in person is quite fine but having 40 percent it clearly gives us some kind of signal that we need to focus here it is going beyond what we are expecting beyond our targets here. now let's see the problem it is growing it's fine but it is coming up with the problems also so what are the problems here? and author has mentioned okay? if you take the cities like srinagar guwahati shillong shimla these are the smaller towns and if you look at the growth rate it is 40 percent so whatever the growth that is happening these towns could not able to manage this uh, changes so managing the new changes it's a question mark here and how exactly especially the sanitation related aspects uh, solid and liquid on the whole it is a waste management and the availability of water also usage of water also so managing these day to day uh, sanitation waste management water availability this has become difficult for these cities the small towns they have developed in a exponential way so because of this over development even the basic necessities that a uh, particular city can handle even this is getting difficult and another aspect is from the perspective of plan the second problem is usually what is happening the planning agencies that are involved in development of these urban areas they are from the playing region so if you look at the planning for a city uh, if you take an example of some city in the plain region see that is different and the cities in these himalayan region this is different you cannot apply the same methodology what you apply for the delhi you cannot apply for jaipur you have some urban planning you cannot apply the similar plan to the srinagar also you cannot apply similar plan to the shillong also the planning should be different here but what we are doing we are just replicating the same plan and this is creating a trouble to the himalayan range states especially the cities in that region and the third reason is the cities are growing i told you that 40 percent growth it's fine there is a growth here but at the same time these growth where exactly these are growing whatever the open spaces are there it is developing in there and if there is a forest region forest region reserve forest region forest land watersheds all these areas are occupied in the name of development so this is going to create a lot of trouble in future and take an example of why not only and that said happened what is exactly the reason because of this tourism aspect the so much commercial activity was going on in that region and where 
it was mentioned in various report that these are is vulnerable for these kind of landslide still these kind of commercial activities when developmental went and when the landslide happens we saw that there's more than 20 and even in the himalayan region similar situation is there you are developing the entire city in every possible way but you're not considering the impact on a long term how exactly this is going to happen if some things happens by uh, unfortunately if something go goes wrong you yeah, take an example of this landslide only in the himalayan region and this is going to take lives of thousands of people not in hundred thousands of people are going to life uh, going to die in this himalayan region so this is the third problem encroachment is ha ha is increasing even the villages are also included into the urban uh, encro uh, uh, agglomeration and it is expanding uh, without any proper plan and the next problem is water bodies and we are destroying water bodies one thing second thing is even underground water is also getting polluted because of this commercial activity and liquid uh, this liquid waste and the solid waste they are entering the water body See, this is a pristine ecosystem where this is going to cater the overall north indian river system so if you are damaging these water bodies then this is going to impact the entire agricultural activity and even to have that uh, drinking water facility will also be difficult if you erode these kind of facilities at the himalayan range uh, in these states so this is a fourth problem that is mentioned especially with respect to the water bodies and finally the tourism related aspect tourism yes we need it it should be controlled but what is happening at this point of time in these uh, states the uncontrolled tourism it is going and this is aggravating the situation in the name of commercialization high intensity tourism is going on and even the small small climatic variation happen if the cloud burst even the uh, rainfall happens continues for 24 hours the entire ecosystem it cannot handle it because of the damage it has created because of tourism commercialization happened because of commercialization uncontrolled development happens uh, development happens because of this development we don't have a plan to deal with these kind of natural calamities here all you are looking for commercialization and this is directly impacting the uh, overall ecosystem so these are the problems we are facing with respect to himalayan range and this is a state there are 11 states in that region so the first part it is talking about problem and let's see the solution how do you handle this four solutions have been mentioned in this news article the first is see all these things happening because of the tourism and author says that see we need development yes at the same time you need protect the ecosystem also how do you balance this you can go for a go tourism this should be the way and this eco tourism yes this is going to financially help the population there at the same time this is going to help the long term sustainability of entire ecosystem so focus on the eco tourism and the second point is that see planning is very bad i told you that whatever the planning you are implementing for jaipur you cannot implement the same planning for the guwahati or shillong now we need to have a separate planning institutions and these planning institutions should have that expertise to deal with these kind of geographical locations and the land use principles everything should be different whatever the you follow at the plain region you cannot implement same principle for the uh, himalayan region also you should consider the geological aspect of this region and also the hydrological aspect of himalayan so there is a the second solution and the third solution is we need to go for a bottom approach bottom approach it means that local people they have a say they are going to implement the uh, scheme they are going to implement the plan which suits them so not the top down approach you have to go, for, go through the bottom up approach and finally finance commission should play very important role how exactly see why this urbanization the development is happening mainly because of money even the local people they are also supporting these tourist activities the reason is money here and their opportunities are very less so they cannot go for agricultural activity since it is a hill region so whatever the restricted opportunities there from there only they have to get their livelihood and here author says that because of that only even people are supporting this kind of commercial commercial now finance commission should enter into this picture and they should give some kind of grants and they should allocate some funds for the development of that region so that people should not look for money with these kind of commercial activities so even the role of finance commission is also very important 
to change this aspect of commercialization of course we need money we need development but go for eco tourism and for that take a help from a finance commission these are the solutions that are mentioned in this news article and uh, the, uh, the points are very good even the problems are also unique and the answers that are mentioned these are also unique you can note it down and you can use it in your answers and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2021 differentiate the causes of landslides in himalayan region and the western parts let's move to the next news the next news is regarding clinical trial and in this article it is talking about no clinical trials for the drugs usually what happens if the new drug is entering the indian market this is compulsory on this company which is introducing this market to go for a clinical trials in india and this trial information that should be given to the government government go through with the data and then finally gives the permission now this clinical trials there is no necessity and this is for a category of drugs not every drugs category of new drugs yeah, I'll, i'll tell you the what category also so clinical trials are not required for certain category of new drugs and another aspect is if another reason is see these drugs should get approval from other countries other countries in the sense that we have a fda for uk for usa and these kind of bodies are there india we have a drug uh, central drug standard control organization this is going to take care of all these aspects like that uk has some other some organization which controls about all these drug safety and security us has some other body japan australia canada so here government has mentioned that if the clinical trials have approved in these countries so then it can be implemented in india also we don't need to go for a clinical trials again in india and that too only for a new drug category so this is the news and what are these new drug category especially if there are any drugs new drug has been introduced for a rare disease what is the rare, rare disease it means that these diseases impact very few population and investing on these and doing research and development it is usually private sector it won't go for it because very few uh, number of people they are getting infected they don't get the returns whatever they are putting for investment so if these kind of drugs enters in the into the market india is not going to put a clinical trial factor for these drugs which are going to treat rare diseases then comes uh, gene therapy or cellu cellular therapy products then comes pandemic situation like covid 19 19 kind of situation and this situation if some drug comes into the market that is also uh, devoid from the clinical trial so exceptions have been given and if the drugs are used for a defense special defense purposes if the drugs are used if there are already there and we are coming up with the advanced therapeutic uh, standards then those drugs also take an example of cancer drug and already this drug it is in india we are using but if the same company has come up with the advanced technology where where the efficiency to deal with the cancerous tissues it is more even these kind of advanced therapeutics are also exempted from clinical trials in india and this order is released by center drug standard control organization this is small news just remember the thing i don't see this is that much important so let's move on so the next regarding and what is the news two days ago there were some some as finance they told that even for the health insurance premium central government is taking tax on so so many people they, even in the parliament also they told this idea they are told that government is trying to get money any way it is possible and getting uh, or putting tax on health insurance fees and they are uh, getting uh, they are putting this tax on these aspect of the putting just on these aspect of for citizen and even so many discussions were also there even now finance minister nirmala sitaram she has given a clarification what is the clarification she has told that i don't have any control over this premium uh, taxation on this decided by council So the GST council decides, it. and in the GST council, the state government they have the power, they have the voting authority. So you want to ask question regarding the taxation on health insurance premium, you have to ask the state government. So not. And the second aspect she mentioned, one thing is state government they have the control. Second aspect is, uh, especially with respect to this, actually what happened? Generally, whatever the GST collected, fifty percent goes to the state government, the central government. We have a, a CGST 
and testing it. So this is the array. And she told that 50% is already going to the state. And even the 50% that comes to state going, 40% goes back to the state. 41%. So entire government has a very very minuscule amount of 9 or 8% tax they are getting. So we are not making any uh, money here. So there was an allegation of central government that this is a daylight robbery. When on premiums, they right? have taken an interest and every month have to pay 1000 premium. And central government is putting taxation on this 1000 also. So I have to pay uh, 50 rupees tax also in every month. So this was called as a daylight robbery. For this, Dhirmala Sitarama, she has told that it is a central state government, they have taken a decision. And even the taxation that are collected, that taxation majority maximum is with the state money. She told that I am not doing any robbery here. Your central government is not getting, not getting any out of this. Want to question? Question the This is what she was doing. Now let me give you guys background information regarding what is GST. So when GST has been formulated, so the tax council also be constituted. This was constituted as an article of three seven, and this is formed by the and this GST council. This is going to administer the all the decision regarding GST matter taken by and here center has a one by third voting power, state has a two by four vote, state has a four. and all the decisions that are taken by three four whole of state will important. Another aspect is the chairman of GST Council finance, central government finance. And every state government it is going to have one member to the Usually the finance minister of state nominated as a member of the and it is left to the discretion of the state government can nominate any other member other than finance. So in general, finance ministers are nominated as a member. So this is the particular topic question of that. What are the most likely advantages of implementing and service? The first of there are three statements. Right state. The first statement. It will replace multiple taxes collected by multiple authorities and will thus create a simple marketing. It will drastically reduce the current account rate. No related to the current account rate. And it will enormously increase the growth and the economy of the and will enable it to overtake China also. So very big. One is the right option. Topic. The next topic regarding Olaf. And uh, the Chopra, he has won the silver medal. The family. Last uh, in the Tokyo Olympic, he has won the And now he has won the silver. And the gold is won by the uh, Pakistani player, that is the uh, Arshad Nabi. And uh, Neera Chopra throws the javelin. Is 9.45 meter and the Arshad Nadi, the best test is 90 point. Okay, so this is a new Olympic record. Let's go to the next topic. The next topic is gender profiling. What exactly is that the topic? Gender profiling and its value in establishing the detailed analysis of how exactly all the Nothing is important from all this, for example. All you have to understand is what exactly. Any related questions are very, very important. Look at the GSA question. Boom, question. And every state government, whatever the state government should be produced. But there will be questions, just the last five years question. DNA related questions are always excellent bank impacts and excess DNA related questions are very good. So let me give this information sorry. It's also called DNA. What exactly it means that this is a forensic thing. Especially it leads to it helps authorities find out because every DNA idea that then your DNA you can write. My birth, other thing. So, in, they have a pattern in place. 
and this pattern is and here also this article is also talking about the established or you know so this so mainly it is in the and every cell in the body has a so some dna there for right all this have a yeah dna especially dna is also and this predominantly due to it and dna evidence is all primary to already have and there is you have obtained the cell and can compare it with the this one the second method of it uh, you don't have a cell but you have select this information can match it up with the dna the result of it usually when a person is selected particular genetic algorithm they can take and take a long order and those can be compared and helpful in finding the uh, criminal these are two ways where dna Apart from these crimes, what are the other applications for forensic analysis? Pairing paternity test or father that also a commission from the court for for a pattern. Then comes identify the natural disaster. Then even identify the body, the uh, these kind of knowledge, and then wildlife for not only human. Animals, wildlife, forensic tests, and also anthropology. Thank you. So the question is, and let's see previous year on particular topic. Question: so Consider the following scale. Bar code can be two. As is the age of plant, or general, you cannot help us. You are not that much developed to assess the. Distinguish among the species that is to collect this is a generic statement, but is identify undesirable and the plants and so on. Also, so on. And uh, this is it, guys. Absolutely, here is available. And please, also be sorry. Sorry, I could not able to upload the video yesterday uh, because uh, it was there was a trouble in my recording system. And after that, sorting out as much correct the issue. Now, after sorting out so much, so I hope this is not really for the success. And thank you for listening. And uh, I'm sorry for the delay.